About two weeks ago, a rather okay-ish received game was released and hit the Wii U and Nintendo Switch. Obviously, we are talking about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which was hardly a match to Ocarina of Time with its flimsy Metacritic rating of 97. Okay, maybe we should be a little bit more serious about this. Breath of the Wild is a great game. In fact, a lot of people even consider it to be the best Zelda game ever made. Just look up Breath of the Wild reviews and you will see what we mean. The game is filled with different sized dungeons, all kinds of enemies, challenges, bosses, side quests and way more. Breath of the Wild is even the best selling standalone game of any Nintendo console ever. It even sold more than Super Mario 64 did in its first week. It completely changed the entire formula and especially the open world feeling was received very well. However, this is not the first time Nintendo tried to bring back the old open world feeling it had in the original The Legend of Zelda. But Nintendo decided that it would be smarter to not implement this heavy open world element. However, Breath of the Wild did not only bring a huge open world with it, it's also the first home console Zelda that gives the player the choice in which order he would like to beat the dungeons. However, these two features were also planned to appear in other games that were before Breath of the Wild's time. This all started as early as Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time went through a bazillion changes. Badass screenshots of the game are widely available on the internet and show a huge variety of gameplay choices Nintendo went through until they ultimately decided on what turned out to be Ocarina of Time. In Ocarina of Time, one can say that the Spirit Temple is beatable before a Shadow Temple without the use of glitches, cheats or hacks. This is because you only need the Lens of Truth, Epona and the Longshot to access Spirit Temple. But let's dig a little deeper, since this isn't all, oh no. Looking at the design of Spirit Temple only, one realizes that this temple would be pretty much beatable at any given time if the Lens of Truth weren't needed. So if the Lens of Truth wasn't in the game and we're just looking at the temple on its own, no previous temple is required for the player to beat Spirit Temple. This is a hint that Ocarina of Time was meant to have no order in which to beat them so that the players could do whatever they wanted after beating Forest Temple. This is also supported by the fact that the medallions were obtainable and usable as bow upgrades at one point in the development. The player could select certain upgrades for his bow depending on which temples he finished. Remains of this can be found in Majora's Mask by using cheat codes to bring back some upgrades such as the wind medallion into the inventory. Unfortunately, the entries got overwritten when they implemented the elemental arrows, but the final items were new objects, leaving the beta arrows with their original name, the name of the medallions. This works because Majora's Mask's development was based off of an earlier version of the engine used in Ocarina of Time. So they weren't removed in Majora's Mask, but can't be found in Ocarina of Time anymore. It was even scrapped so late into the development that the empty slots of these medallion upgrades can still be seen in the E3 demo of 1997. The problem Nintendo most likely ran into was that certain rewards were useless or felt useless, which interfered with a traditional Zelda charm. But this is not everything. Breath of the Wild features an insane amount of shrines, 120 to be exact. Those little mini dungeons are supposed to reward you heavily for finding them and solving their puzzles. Once again, this is not the first time Nintendo tried to make a sense of curiosity and exploration for the player. In fact, it seems like Nintendo tried their best to restore this sense of exploration in The Wind Waker already. Wind Waker was the first Zelda game in the 3D series that was not heavily restricted by its environment. The player could go wherever he wanted once he had all three pearls. So from that point on, he or she could explore as much as they wanted. Unfortunately, the team suddenly found themselves stuck because of hardware limitations. In an interview, Aonuma mentioned that the boat would get all bumpy due to the hardware being too slow with loading everything. But is this really all the evidence for an early concept of the shrines that are seen in Breath of the Wild? Nope, that's not all. And this is where another factor comes in. We covered a couple of beta rooms from the Wind Waker on this channel already. However, we also mentioned that there are some dungeons that are different. However, what we didn't say is that there are entire mini dungeons that were scrapped from the game that feature their own little puzzles with tiny rewards at the end. However, their rewards were only rupees, so that's nothing special. This could be one of the reasons why they brought back Tingle with his extremely expensive translation service, since this money could come in handy then. But in the end, the hardware limitations and the rather sad rewards for these wannabe shrines 
led them to being scrapped somewhere during development. A few of them seem to have made it into the game regardless, since they ended up being used for Triforce charts. But this seems to be more of an emergency solution for all the extra maps they made. So as you can see, Nintendo has tried to bring back the old formula before, but never really succeeded. There were always certain problems with the hardware or the idea, however we can clearly see that they tried. But now with Breath of the Wild, they finally did it and revived the entire franchise because of it, since the standard Zelda formula really, really started to feel old. So yeah, we're enjoying the game a lot. Thanks for watching everybody, if you want to watch more videos you can click the annotations on the screen right now and be sure to click the subscribe button and then the little bell next to it because notifications are being weird again as far as I've seen. So be sure to do that if you haven't done that yet.